All right. Our God is a good God. Amen. Amen. Some of you I already know. Some of you I don't know. So, uh, but that's okay. We all know each other through God. Amen. हम परमेश्वर के द्वारा एक दूसरे को सभी जानते हैं और परमेश्वर के ही द्वारा आज हम यहाँ पे उपस्थित हैं तो प्रार्थना करें कि परमेश्वर का सहायक और उसके उपस्थिति हमारे बीच में हो जैसे कि मैं आज प्रचार को करूँगा प्रार्थना करता हूँ कि परमेश्वर हमें बढ़ाई को दे और आगे को बढ़ाए दैट गॉड लीडर्स इन गाइडर्स एंड इन स्पिरिट वी विल डेल All right. Um, I'd just like to uh, read from the book of Matthew, Mati Rachit Suchi Machar, chapter 14. Are they here? 14? Are they here? 14. Are they here? 14. 23 to 33. We all know this story. 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 This story is about uh, Peter walking on water. <coughs> Now, um, I, think, I think we all know this story. Uh, I, I'll quickly read, uh, and, then, and then we'll go through. And uh, I, I kind of want to share something that's a little bit different to what we normally hear about this story. Something slightly different, something to, to a bit of a different angle, uh, and, and, and see where God leads us with that. So we'll go to the book of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 23 to 33. It says in verse 23, and after he had dismissed the crowds, this is Jesus, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat battened by the waves was far from the land. For the wind was against them, and early in the morning he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong winds, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, you of little faith, why do you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, and we just pray, God, for your anointing, for your blessing. We pray, God, for your leading in this place, that your spirit will come, Father, and, and, and take a hold of the heart of your people. Father, I pray, Lord, that uh, you will touch uh, people, Father, that you will lift them up, Father, that you will give them freedom, and you will give them the ability, O oh Lord, to just uh, get rid of, Father, whatever burdens they have this morning, and that they can come to you knowing that you are a true one God that they can trust in, and truly you are a Savior. Father, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. तो हम देखते हैं कि ये जो ये जो कहानी है जीसस पानी में चल के आता है जीसस इज वर्किंग ऑन द वोर टूवर्ड्स द बर्ट बट वन वी वन वी हियर दिस स्टोरी दिस स्टोरी इज 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 रियली अ स्टोरी अबाउट um about the disciples and and जीसस एंड एंड वी सी दैट जीसस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल ही ही वाज ही वाज ऑन द माउंटेन प्राइंग नाउ Some of us were born with this story. Some of us were born in Christian homes. We know this story uh, by hand, by heart. For some of us, this story may be new, something that we've never heard before. Um, you know, and, and I, I could be wrong, but, but all of us, you know, each one of us, are not here because of a story. We are not here because of, of, of how much faith uh, we might have or how much trust we might have, have in God. First of all, we are here because one day somebody told you about the good news of Christ. Amen. One day somebody took out the time to, to, to go out their house, gain some courage to come out to you and say, hey, you know what, brother? You know what, sister? God loves you. And, and that is why you're here today. You're here today because somebody at some point in your life told you about the powerful, about the, about the almighty God that we have, about the God that uh, loves us, that cares for us, and a God that, that can move mountains for us. That's why we're here today. And, and you know, it's not because I am preaching or, or someone else is preaching or, or sharing the gospel, but it is because you have experienced God in a mighty, in a personal way. Amen? 
Amen. We agree with that, yeah? We're here because we have experienced God in a mighty and a personal way. And, and when we talk about this story of, of Jesus walking on water, you know, we can, you know, if, if we quickly summarize this story, the story is that Jesus is walking on the water, the disciples are in the boat, they're in trouble, uh, the, the, the storm is strong, uh, there's a lot of waves, the boat is being tossed to and fro, and, and we see that Jesus is, is walking on the water towards them, and the disciples did not recognize Jesus. What they think is it is a ghost. And, and to cut, you know, to, to really summarize the story, we could easily say that um, the story is all about Peter having enough courage. He summed up enough courage, he summed up enough faith to step out in the water. You know, typically we don't walk on water, yes? Anybody walked on water here? pani so, so we see that, that Peter gained enough courage, enough trust in his heart to start to walk on water. And, and you know, we could, we could really just um, bring this story to a point where we say uh, the morale of the story is really if you have enough faith. If you have enough faith, you can do anything. We can boil this story down to that. If you have enough faith, if you have enough trust in God, if you look to God for everything, all things are possible. And that is true, and I trust in that, and I believe in that with all my heart. That is why I am here today. That is why I am where I am today, because I trust in God. But I think this story uh, has a lot more than just that. This story is not just about faith. It's not just about faith. But 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 it's not just about So the first thing we see in this story is... is that Jesus is on the mountain praying. And the disciples are where? So the Jesus is on the mountain. Let's imagine this is the mountain. And I am here and I am praying. Okay? And, 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 and the disciples are in the boat somewhere in the sea. Somewhere in the, in the middle of the ocean. Which is, which is a fair distance away. Kafi dur hai. Jo disciples hai. Parmeshwar se kafi dur hai. So Jesus is on the mountain praying. The disciples are a fair distance away in the water. Now, I want you to start to identify yourselves. Khud ko us jaga pe rakho. Jo jaga pe disciples log hai. So, there's three things happening there. Number one. Disciples. The disciples are afraid. Some of them in the boat. कुछ कुछ लोग जो 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 बोट में है जो नाव में है डर गए हैं सो इमेजिन इफ यू इन द बाइट एज अ बिग स्टोम आई एम श्योर यू विल बी ग्रिप विथ फियर यस I'm sure some of us will be scared for, for our lives. Some of us will be scared because maybe you don't know how to swim. Maybe, uh, maybe you, you, you're afraid that, that what will happen if, if, if you die. Who will look after your kids and all the rest of the story. So, so you, you're afraid. So some of the disciples in the boat, some of them are afraid. And I'm sure we can identify with that. Number two, some of them are so caught up in fear that they don't, don't know what to say, what to do. So they're in, in fear of making the wrong decisions. They're in the fear of making the wrong decisions. It's not that they can't do anything. That I will do anything, I will do anything, I will do anything. So they're scared and, and, and they're so caught up in fear that they are f- afraid of making the wrong decision. Number three, we see one guy, Peter, experiencing the thrill of stepping out into the unknown. He, he is stepping out into something no one has ever been before. No one has ever been so. So he 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 is a guy who's who's a thrill seeker who who wants to just step out. Who says, Jesus, if you command me, I will come out and walk on water. So we see three things here. One, some disciples are afraid. Two, some of them are so afraid uh, that, that they're confused. They don't know what to say. They don't know whether it's God or, or it's it's a ghost. They don't know what's going on. And here Peter is number three, stepping out into something. I know, and I'm, I, I'm, I'm sure we can identify with that. I, I'm sure we have stepped out into the unknown sometimes. You know, you might, have, have, you might be stepping into a relationship that you're not sure about or that, you, that, 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 that is a new zone. You maybe, maybe you're newly married. Maybe it's something new for you. Maybe, maybe you're starting a new job. Maybe you, you're applying for a new job. You're stepping out into something that you have never been for, stepping out into an area that you never have been in before out of your comfort zone. Maybe you've just moved houses. Maybe you've just moved your family from, from interstate. And it's one of those things where, you know, you could identify yourself where you're being in a place that is new, that you're uncomfortable, that you're not sure. Uh, and that's where Peter was. He was not sure. He was uncomfortable, but he was willing to 
step out. Maybe you can identify with that. Maybe, maybe you can identify with some of the people in the boat that were thinking, you know what? I'm sinking. I'm literally sinking. I am sinking in debt. I'm sinking in depression. I'm sinking in family pressure, peer pressure, whatever it might be. You, you, you know, you, you think you're sinking and there is no way out. You think maybe you're doomed. You know, we could identify with all of those things. And, and, and to be honest, it, it's true. It's true. Some of us at times are afraid. Some of us at times are, are confused. We don't know what to say, what to do, what decisions to make. We come to crossroads. हम रास्ते में आ जाते हैं अपने अपने क्रिश्चियन लाइफ में जो हम जानते नहीं किस डिसीजन को ले कहाँ पे हम जाए सो वी गेट टू दोज पॉइंट बट वट आई वॉन्ट पॉइंट आउट टू यू टूडे इज इज एट सम पॉइंट ऑल ऑफ एस हैव बीन इन दिस प्लेसेज I have been at some point in my life in one of these places where I was confused maybe I was getting into something new maybe you know I remember the first time I preached man I got up I got up the steps with with my legs shaking if if you know if if if, if I was I'm sure some of some people had the sound of me trembling across the stage and and I, and I and I stood the pulpit and let me tell you the pulpit this pulpit was my support and I didn't let it go otherwise I was going to fall You know, because I was so, this was something I had never done before. It was, I was stepping out into something new. And we, we go through those things. And, and I'm sure we can all identify with these things. And you know, in our lives, um, um, all of those things happen. All of those things come along. But I want to tell you something. And, and that is that when we look at this story, sometimes we see this story told in a way that, that maybe sometimes to me, I, I find sometimes this story can be very encouraging, but at the same time can be sometimes discouraging. What I mean by this is if you really look at this story, I, I have heard this story told a lot of times um, in a way where we say, you know what, if you have enough faith, all things are possible. And I believe in that, I trust in that. But the flip side is if you don't have enough faith, what happens? Are you alone? Is this God there for you? What happens if you, if you, if you, if you haven't mustered up enough faith? What happens if, you, if, you, if you're kind of growing in your trust? What happens then? What is the moral of this story? I think every story in the Bible, there's two aspects to it. In the story of the Bible, there are sides, right? two, two sides to it. And, and one side is that it shows who we are. And maybe where we are. And the other side of the story, the flip side of the story is that shows who God is and where God is in relation to you and I. And that's what I want to point out today. So when we look at this story, I'm sure uh, you, can, you can say maybe, maybe you were the cautious one in the boat. Maybe you identify yourself as the brave one who walked on water for, for, for a little, little time. Maybe you're one of those who's so afraid, who's, who's sinking, who's... who's Who's, who's losing things, who's, who's not winning any battles. You're struggling with life. Things are not making sense. Maybe you know, you're one of those people. But let me tell you that all of us, the disciples that, was in the, the disciples that were afraid in the boat, the disciples that were confused, and Peter, all of them have one thing in common that we also have in common. Let's look at uh, verse 15. Verse 15, I think. No, not verse 15, verse, verse 25. Verse 25. So chapter 14, verse 25, it says there, and early in the morning, what happened? He came walking towards them on the lake. I want, to, I want you to take special note of that. Early in the morning, Jesus, he came walking towards them on the lake. What does that mean? It means three things. Number one, the first thing we look at is, is where was Jesus while the disciples were in trouble in the lake? He was miles away, wasn't he? Parameshwar kafi dur thaunse. So could Jesus, do you think Jesus could see them? I really have to ask myself, could Jesus see them from the mountain in the middle of the ocean You know, it, it's past midnight, it's quite late in the night. Could Jesus really see them in the dark, in the storm? How, do, how did Jesus see them? It's an interesting question, isn't it? Because Jesus, 
was at the mountain praying. And if you read, read some other versions of the Bible, other, other translations, it'll tell you that, that Christ walked towards them on the water. And it doesn't say that Christ had to find them, had to yell out, figure out where they were. See, Christ didn't have to do that. Parmeshwar ko unko khojna nahi pada. Parmeshwar janta tha ki wo kis jaga pe hai. Sahi jaga pe. God knew exactly where his disciples was. You know what, friends? I want to tell you this morning. It doesn't matter where you are in your life. You may be at, at, at the bottom of your life. You may be feeling depressed. You may be feeling rejected. You may be feeling this morning like nobody loves you. You may be in trouble. You may have financial issues. You may have marital issues. It doesn't matter. Guess what? Our God can see you exactly where you are. Amen. You know what? The eyes of our God, the eyes of Christ, Parmeshwar ke jiwa ke, Parmeshwar ke nazar hai, tumhare upar se nahi hatta hai. Amen. Always, let me tell you, always, it is a guarantee that the eyes of God is on his beloved. Amen. This morning, let's take, let, let's take faith in that. Let's take joy in that. Let's take pride in that and, and comfort in that, that we know that Christ, Jesus, his eyes are on you. Many a times we've been told this story and, 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 and in the story it says that Peter, he took his eyes off Jesus. Let me tell you, Jesus never takes his eyes off you and I. Amen. Amen. Can we give the Lord a plaque offering? Hallelujah. Our God is an awesome God. Amen. So we see he was on the mountain praying. He was on the mountain praying and he pinpoints exactly where his beloved are. Amen. Exactly where his people are. So Jesus now starts to Come toward them. And, and Jesus makes his way down the mountain. I'm not sure how he makes his way down the mountain. Probably walk down the mountain and then gets to the water and he starts to walk on water as if he was walking on land. Simply just walks, just strolls by. You know, I, I sometimes think, man, if I was Jesus, how would I be walking on water? Straight from the mountain, you know, just singing along. Hallelujah. This is a good day, you know. God is great, and, and I'm just walking. So Jesus is just walking on water towards the disciples. Jesus is walking on water towards the disciples. You know, in the story, Peter walks on water. I admit, that is a, that is a great miracle, isn't it? That's, that's pretty cool. That's the closest to being godlike you could be. That's the closest to being godlike, isn't it? Because no one else has walked on water. That's, that's defying the laws of nature, that's defying what Christ or God had put in place. So Peter experiences that just for a glimpse. But when we start to look beyond that, before Peter walked on water and after Peter walked on water, we really start to see the heart of Jesus. When we start to really look at the story just before and just after the incident where Peter walks on water. So we see Jesus is walking towards the boat. Let me, let, me, let me tell you, friends, this morning that this story is, 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 yes, it's about faith. But moreover, this story is about movement. This story is about Christ moving towards you and I. Amen? See, the, the, the common thing between the disciples, whether it was Peter, whether it was the one in the boat that was confused, whether it was one that didn't believe, whether it is, it is you, it is me, it doesn't matter where you are in your life, doesn't matter who you are in your life, doesn't matter at what place you may be, this morning Christ is drawing near to you. Amen? You see, in this story, Christ was drawing near to the disciples. Disciples were still there in the boat, lost, confused, no idea, panicking. They weren't even praying. They weren't even praying. They were panicking. They thought the boat will capsize. Now ult jayega. Ham dub jayenge. That's what they were thinking. But see, Jesus, not only was his eyes on his disciples, he walked towards them. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm so encouraged this morning to know that Christ himself is working, is willing to walk, is willing to move, is willing to draw near to me. There is nothing I have to do. Let, let, me, let, me, let me explain something. You know, sometimes when we, when we come from a, a Hindi background, and, and I know some of us do, I did, when we come from a Hindi background, there is this, this idea, this concept in our heads that you have to do something. 
कुछ करना पड़ेगा तो परमेश्वर हमसे प्रेम करेगा आई हैव टू डू समथिंग फॉर गॉड टू फाइंड वो दिन सिन मी आई हैव टू डू समथिंग कुछ करना पड़ेगा कि परमेश्वर हमारे ओर देखे कुछ कुछ चढ़ाना पड़ेगा कुछ भेंट को लाना पड़ेगा लेकिन धर्मशास्त्र में बताता है कि परमेश्वर खुद आता है ही इज नॉट एक्सपेक्टिंग एनी थिंग फ्रॉम यू कुछ लाने का जरूरी नहीं है यू डोंट हैव टू ब्रिंग एनी थिंग यू डोंट हैव टू डू एनी थिंग यू डोंट हैव टू ब्रिंग अ सेक्रीफाइस ओ यू हैव टू डू इज इज लुक अप टू गॉड Amen. You know, this morning, friends, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you have been. It doesn't matter what level your your faith may be in. What level of 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 walk you are in Christ. Take heart and know that as long as your heart is for Christ, He is drawing near to you. Amen. He is coming closer to you. He is nearer, closer than you can even imagine. All we have to do. The Bible says in Revelation three twenty, I stand at the door and knock. Amen. I stand at the door and knock. What does that mean? Christ is already there. He is already here. He is knocking. He is at the door of our hearts. He is at the window of our lives and he's saying, "You know what? If you open the door, if you just open the door, there are no costs because Christ operates in one thing and that is grace." Amen. Grace means favor that is not deserved amen undeserved favor god giving us more than what we deserve instead of giving us punishment uh, uh, or, or death for a wages of sin what does he do he gives us christ who brings life back to us amen see that's the christ we serve he is a god of grace and and, and we see this morning as we look through the scriptures we look at this story um jesus is walking towards the disciples now when you see jesus walking on water one of the things i noticed in this story is as jesus is walking in 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 water he gets close enough to the boat so that the disciples could just recognize him and and what did the disciples think they thought he was a ghost shaitan hai they said he was a ghost they were afraid oh man it's a ghost what do we do what do we do let's run let's hide what does jesus say fear not it is i so we see that not only is jesus watching us all the time continuously not only is he drawing closer to us drawing closer to us without any condition but he is also telling us not to be afraid but to put our trust in him but to know that he is in control but to know that he is christ that he is more than enough for all our situations for all our hardships for all our trials whatever we might go through he is more than enough amen he is more that's what christ is saying to us this morning he's saying whatever your trial is whatever your hardship is i am more than enough that's why i am coming towards you and we see as jesus walks towards the disciples he doesn't just stop outside the boat he doesn't stop outside the boat what does jesus do he gets in the boat you know what jesus is willing to get into your situation whatever you are going through friends this morning whatever you going through brothers and sisters god is willing to come into your situation come into your life come into whatever hardship it is come into whatever you are going through because he is a god who cares amen because he is a god who loves he doesn't just come and, and sit there and watch you go through your trouble he says you know what i'm not only going to come to close to your situation i'm just not going to come close to the boat but i am going to come so close that i'm going to get into your boat i'm going to get into your life i'm going to get inside of you and i'm going to start to build you i'm going to start to change you and as i come into you as i come into your situation as i come into your marriage as i come into your workplace as i come into your hardship as i come into your finances when i come in let me tell you god says there will be calmness because in this story we see as soon as jesus got in the boat what happened the winds ceased amen you know what friends when jesus comes into the situation when 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 christ comes into your marriage when christ comes into your situation into your trials into your hardships the hardship doesn't go away but the calmness of christ the love of christ comes and calms you down because he knows and he assures you that when he is in control amen the one that is in you is greater than the one that is in the world when he is in control when he is in you 
You do not need to worry. Amen. You do not need to worry. You not, do not need to despair because when he is in you, the situation that you are going through, guess what? The Christ says that I go before you. Amen. Every situation, whatever it may be. I'm not sure what you're going through this morning. I'm not sure uh, where you've come from this morning. I can tell you one thing though. I am sure that Christ wants to be with you. Amen. Christ wants to come into your life. Christ wants to come into your situation. He wants to come and, and rid you of your trials and your hardships and your troubles. Let me, let me remind you that, that you know, as disciples, they were going through trouble. They were in the boat. While Jesus was with them, they were going through trouble. Jesus was praying. They were going through trouble. What I'm saying this morning is, is when Christ comes, it doesn't mean that all the troubles, all the hardships will just depart. What I am saying is when Christ comes, we have the ability. Amen. We have the strength. We have the power. We have the anointing. We have God with us. And we can deal with the situations. We can walk with the situation with our heads held up high because we know that God is in control. Amen. We know that our almighty, all-powerful Christ has full control. He is more than capable. He is more than enough for all our needs all our situations all we need to do is call on christ see jesus said to them friends he said take heart it is i do not be afraid amen that's what jesus is saying to us all this morning he's saying take heart do not be afraid it is i i am here your father i am here i am here all possible is here your god who can take care of all things i am here your healing friends this morning let me let me remind you your healing this morning is here your freedom this morning is here. When you trust in Christ, when you put your heart in Christ, you do not have to have all the knowledge, all the ability, all the experience. No, no, no. All you have to do is say, you know what, Jesus, I recognize that you're not a ghost. I recognize that you're Christ. I recognize that you are drawing near to me. I recognize that you have walked all the way down the mountain, on through the waters to come into my situation. You know what the funny thing is? Honestly, if you could walk on water, if you could walk on water, why would you get in a boat that's about to sink? Why would you? If, if I could walk on water, uh, is that right, brother? If you could walk on water, would you get in a boat that's about to sink? You know, normal people will say, he's gone crazy. What's wrong with him? He can walk on water. Why would he take a ride in a boat that's just about to sink? But you know what, friends? Jesus is not about the ride. He's about the person. Amen? He's not about the situation. He's about the personality. He's not about the storm. He's about the calmness that he's going to bring. You see, he left the storm and he got into the boat. And the funny thing is, as he left the storm and got into the boat, the storm left the boat. Amen? There was calmness because when Christ comes, when Christ comes, I, I, you know, I, I, I can tell you, I, I've, I've been in, I've been, I left Fiji in 1997. I've been overseas for many years. And one thing I, I'm still glad and I'm still so thankful of is, is, is Kino Assembly because through Kino Assembly, I came to know the guy who is always in my boat, the Christ. He is always with me. doesn't matter where I go. You know, I went to New Zealand. I went to Australia. I went through some hardships. I went through some troubled times. But God has always been there. Some of you might know that my wife and I, we prayed for 10 years to have, to have a child. I remember going to church every morning. And, and, and with a good heart, people go, hey, brother, how are you? Hey, come on, man, what are you doing? We, we want to see some little ones. And, 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 and. One week of that, two weeks of that, a month, 12 months of that, it starts to play on your mind. It starts to play on your heart. And that's when I really went down to my knees because I always knew and I have always known that only one man, only one man, and that is God himself, can come into my situation. I can't cry to the doctors. I can't cry to someone else, but I can go before him. Man to man, I can boil, boil down to him. I can cry to him and say, God, you know what? I really need you. And you see, funny thing about this story is, 
as Jesus got in the boat. Some of the disciples recognized him and said, hey, now we know that you are the Son of God. What Christ is saying, friends, is, is for some people it takes time. And this morning I want to remind us, don't look at your brother who may be a little bit weak. Don't look at your sister who might be a little bit slower in, in grasping and knowing Christ. Because Christ said, I'm going to come and meet you wherever you are. Not where you will be, not where you're from, but right where you are, right now. Christ is saying, I'm going to come into your situation. I'm going to come into your place of existence. Jis jagha pe aap ho, jaise bhi ho, parmeshwar us jagha pe aayega. Parmeshwar nahi kehta hai ki aap thoda bad jao, thoda aage ho jao, thoda thoda aur phad lo, thoda aur Bible ko samajho tab mai aayega. Parmeshwar kehta hai jagha pe bhi aap ho, wherever you are, right there, I want to come. And be with you. I want to come and be in your situation. You see, he's a different God. He's not about what you can achieve. He's not about the culture you come from. You know, what family do you come from? What country do you come from? What, what house do you live in? What car do you drive? God is not into that. God says, What's your heart this morning? I want to ask you a simple question this morning. What's your heart? Are you willing to come to Christ this morning, open up and say, God, you know what? I love you and, 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 and I'm going through things. And I just want to ask you to come into my life. Come into my situation. Come into my, my troubles, my, my financial difficulties. Whatever it may be. One thing, one last thing about this story is Peter says to Jesus, says, Lord, if it is you, command me and I will walk on water. What does this signify? What does that tell us this morning? What does that tell us this morning? I like to visualize things. When I read a story, I'd like to picture it in my mind. And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I sit at home and, and, and in my study, in, in my prayer place, and as I'm reading the story, I'm trying to visualize, and, and, and God gave me this, this amazing picture. Peter didn't walk on water. No man can. Peter didn't walk on water. You see, what Peter did was he said, God, if it is you, command me. And as Jesus comes into our situations, friends, as he comes into our lives, and you say to God, Jesus, command me, and I can walk on water. And as you walk on water, let me tell you, every step of the way, his palms are under your feet. Amen. His hands are under your feet. I, I, I don't care what your situation is, but let me tell you, he will carry you. You will not feel, you will not hear, you will not feel the wrath of the storm, you will not feel the water because his palms, his hands, his hands are under your feet. Amen. You know what, this morning, friends, I can tell you that, that, that that's the God we serve. That as you, like Peter, get enough courage to say, God, if it is you, if it is you, Parmeshwar, agar, agar aap hai, sachai mein agar aap hai, to mein paani pe chal sakunga. And as he steps out, you know, this picture that came in my mind was, as he stepped out, the palms of Jesus, amen, were under his feet. Every step of the way, every step of the way. And, and did Peter start to sink? You know, we hear, we hear in the story that, that, that Peter, he took his focus of Jesus. And he, and he, and he focused for, for just a little bit on the storm. Did Jesus take his hand away? Or 
Was Jesus not there? You know, do we go through difficulties and 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 Hindi me bolat? Do you know? Hamlog dagmagay jata hai kabi kabi. Sometimes it happens, eh? We 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 stumble a little bit. We fall a little bit. And and Christ is saying this morning that if I when and if I come into your situation, you might you might stumble. The key here, friends, is that if you stumble. Where do you go? I want. I want to show you something. So, Peter, how many of you have been in a boat before? Yep, I've been in a boat before. And if you jump out of the boat and you start to sink, what do you do? Any man with a little bit of brain will swim back to the boat. Isn't that right? So, I got up. Now I'm saying, Bahare kuda, or ab 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 dubne laga. तो पहला चीज आपके दिमाग में आएगा कि तैर के हम नाव के पास जाए ना दैट दैट्स व्हाट यू विल डू दैट्स व्हाट आई वुड डू व्हाट डिड पीटर डू व्हेन ही स्टार्टेड टू टू सिंक व्हेन ही फेल्ट लाइक ही वाज ही वाज गेटिंग ही इज गोइंग टू गो अंडर वाटर दिस इज व्हाट जीसस इज ट्राइंग टू टीच अस दिस मॉर्निंग यू सी पीटर नेवर लुक्ड बैक एट द बोट अमेन Peter never looked back at his raggedy situation. Peter never looked back at 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 where he was. And that's what I want to I want to tell you this morning that Jesus is drawing closer to you. He wants to be in your situation and when Jesus comes, jab parmeshwar aapke situation mein aa jata hai, aapke paas mein aa jata hai, never look back to where you were. Peeche mud ke nahi dekho. Kyunki parmeshwar kehta hai कैसे भी है डगमा डगमगा भी गया लेकिन चलते रहो बिकॉज इफ यू कीप वॉकिंग कीप लुकिंग टू जीसस ही इज गोना स्ट्रेच इज हैंड हैट आई मीन परमेश्वर हाथ को बढ़ाएगा तुम्हें उठाएगा क्योंकि तुम्हारा नजर परमेश्वर पे है आई मीन लुक टू जीसस एंड एंड आई वांट टू रिमाइंड दिस मॉर्निंग व्हेन वी कम आउट ऑफ आवर सिचुएशन व्हेन वी कम आउट ऑफ आवर हार्डशिप्स व्हेन व्हेन जीसस इज इन आवर सिचुएशंस कम व्हाट माय नेवर लुक बैक टू वेयर यू वर because once jesus is in the boat storms are around you but they cannot touch you amen can we all rise to our feet